Dry ice is a material obtained by cooling and compressing carbon dioxide until it solidifies. It produces a dense fog when it comes into contact with water and can clean even the deepest well. But how is dry ice manufactured on an industrial scale? In this video, we will discover how one of the most amazing chemical compounds is produced. Dry ice was accidentally discovered in 1835 by the French chemist Adrien Jean-Pierre. Laurier found that when liquid CO2 was released from a pressurized container, part of the gas evaporated quickly, leaving behind a solid white residue. At that time, dry ice was mainly used for refrigeration, especially in the food industry and for transporting perishable products. During World War II, dry ice was used to preserve blood, medicines, and food on the battlefronts. Unlike regular ice, which melts into liquid, dry ice transitions directly from solid to gas in a process called sublimation. Because of this, it leaves no residue after evaporation. Its extremely low temperature makes it an ideal resource for refrigeration, fog effects, and various industrial applications. Its primary function is to preserve items in places without refrigerators. For example, during a heart transplant, dry ice is needed to keep the organ cold during transport. It is also used to transport vaccines and any type of biological material, as dry ice is ideal for maintaining low temperatures. When submerged in hot water, carbon dioxide is quickly released, creating thick fog, making it perfect for special effects. To learn about the dry ice manufacturing process, we visited Art Products, one of the world's leading manufacturers of this product. Dry ice is produced from pure carbon dioxide extracted and processed from various industrial sources. Carbon dioxide is generated as a byproduct of sugar fermentation and alcohol production at breweries and distilleries. This gas is captured, purified, and stored during ammonia production. In fertilizer manufacturing, CO2 is generated as a byproduct and captured before being released into the atmosphere. Some refineries produce CO2 during the transformation of hydrocarbons into fuels and chemicals. CO2 can also be recovered from fossil fuel combustion in power plants. The carbon dioxide obtained from these sources contains impurities that must be removed to ensure its safe use in dry ice production. Solid particles and coarse impurities are filtered out using mechanical filters. The gas then passes through washing towers, where other chemical compounds are removed. The carbon dioxide is compressed at high pressure, around 15 bar, to facilitate handling and storage. This pressure is equivalent to being 150 meters below sea level. The CO2 is then cooled to approximately minus 20 to minus 30 degrees Celsius, turning it into a cryogenic liquid. In this state, it is easier to transport and store in tanks. Once purified, the carbon dioxide is stored in cryogenic tanks designed to withstand high pressure and low temperatures. These tanks are made of stainless steel to prevent corrosion, have safety valves to prevent overpressure, and are kept below freezing temperatures to avoid CO2 evaporation. The storage tanks have a total capacity of 2,600 tons of liquid carbon dioxide. This product can be transported to customers in tanker trucks or used directly in dry ice production. Inside the plant, liquid carbon dioxide is transported from storage tanks to the production facility through pipelines leading to specialized dry ice manufacturing machines. Since high concentrations of carbon dioxide can be suffocating, all facilities are equipped with ventilation and monitoring systems to control CO2 levels. Additionally, Employees wear safety goggles, gloves, and personal gas detectors as protective measures. When carbon dioxide is injected into the production machines, the pressure is reduced to about 5 bar, allowing CO2 snow to form. This decompression occurs rapidly, causing the temperature to drop drastically. The transformation of liquid carbon dioxide into CO2 snow happens through rapid expansion, which is achieved by reducing pressure in a controlled manner. As it expands quickly, carbon dioxide undergoes instant cooling by absorbing energy from the environment. This causes part of the CO2 to transition from liquid to solid, forming tiny snow particles. Another portion of the carbon dioxide turns into gas and is released through a ventilation system. The CO2 snow is collected in a chamber inside the dry ice production machine, accumulating in the form of a fine, loose powder similar to real snow. 
However, this carbon dioxide snow is not compact and must be pressed into blocks or pellets. In the next step, to turn CO2 snow into solid dry ice, a hydraulic press system applies high pressure to the material. Large amounts of carbon dioxide snow are introduced into a rectangular mold, where a hydraulic piston applies up to 300 bar of pressure. Under this pressure, the snow particles bond together, forming a compact, solid block of dry ice. The resulting dry ice has a temperature of minus 78.5 degrees Celsius. The block is then ejected from the mold and cut into different sizes according to customer needs. For pellet production, instead of using a rectangular mold, CO2 snow is fed into an extruder with holes of different diameters. A mechanical piston pushes the snow through the holes with great force, forming solid dry ice cylinders. Depending on the hole diameter, large 16mm pellets can be produced for refrigeration and transport. The plant also manufactures 3mm pellets used for cryogenic cleaning. Dry ice still maintains a temperature of minus 78.5 degrees Celsius and must be kept in a controlled environment to prevent premature sublimation. The 16mm pellets are poured into insulated containers, while dry ice blocks produced by another machine weigh approximately 3 kilograms each. Since raw materials are not free and also contribute to pollution, the company recovers much of the carbon dioxide wasted in the machines. Once production is complete, the dry ice is transported via a conveyor belt to the packaging phase. At this point, various laboratory tests are conducted to measure the product's weight, size, and odor. The density and compactness of the dry ice are checked to prevent fragmentation. The size of the blocks is measured to meet sales standards, and the purity of the dry ice is verified to ensure it contains no impurities. After passing these tests, the dry ice is ready for storage and distribution. One challenge with dry ice is that it is very difficult to transport. It continuously transitions from solid to gas, gradually disappearing. That is why large thermal boxes made of polystyrene, functioning like coolers, are used. The goal is to maintain the dry ice temperature and minimize its conversion to carbon dioxide gas. Storage is key to minimizing dry ice sublimation, which occurs at a rate of approximately 5 to 10 percent per day, depending on environmental conditions. Before placing dry ice into storage containers, they are thoroughly cleaned. Thermal containers designed with insulating materials are used to reduce heat transfer and slow sublimation. The finished product is placed into the containers to ensure preservation before being distributed to customers worldwide. Although dry ice remains at minus 78.5 degrees Celsius, it does not require electric refrigeration, as it stays solid on its own. Dry ice is distributed across various industries, including the food industry for preserving frozen products, hospitals for storing vaccines, biological samples, and organs, and companies that use dry ice pellets for industrial cleaning without chemical residues. It is also used in special effects to create fog in concerts, theaters, and film productions. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and share it with someone who might find it interesting. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications to keep learning.